right, pick it up, Mr. Nick Albanese. He is a local uh, artist. He's a hilarious guy, a funny man. He has his one-man show. Come on, come on in. Come on. Gotta let him in. Sorry. Gotta let. Sorry. Hey, gotta let. Hey. How you doing? Good. How are you, Nick? How's it going? Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate this it. This is cool. Oh, yeah. uh, look at this. Well, you know, it's, I brought you water. You, you're very kind. I want you to stay hydrated. Thank I, you. I don't want you passing out like Hillary. Well, you know, it's like very that. thoughtful of yeah, you. Yeah, especially mean, it while was, you're driving. Yeah, it was. Uh, that's uh, that's never a good thing. There, you get a little <laughs> peckish. You never know. It's, uh, although there's vans around here, yeah. blacked out vans. You know anything about those? Or no, no. Okay. <laughs> Could be FBI. I don't know. <laughs> I am first, still, thing in, I, the first thing an Italian guy yeah. mentions when he gets in my car is the FBI. Yeah, my these cameras look very. Uh, if this makes cool, it, but if, if this makes it to tape, uh, I love my wife very much. <laughs> nice woman. Uh, so you're, you're safe. I try, I try. You know your so, way around. Uh, you know, it's, it's the east side here. It's you know, yeah. I mean, you, a lot of one way. Everything's a one way. If you yeah. go the wrong way, you just you make a statement. It's one way. So. It's their way. So that's, that's it. Absolutely, that's absolutely. It. So how you been? Good, good. You, uh, you're. Uh, you, You've been a lifelong Rhode Islander. And yeah, born and raised in Providence, okay. Rhode Island. Yeah, and you're the first one. You're the first generation. Yeah, I'm first generation. Uh, okay, so where's your family from? Uh, my family is from Sicily, a little okay. town called Bagaria. All right. And uh, my mom and dad are both from there. My sister and brother were born there, and then uh, they came over 1974. Okay. Just in time, she made the deadline before you. You can't go on a plane oh, after okay. a certain months. Of oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. And then a couple months later, I was born. Wow! In Providence, wow. The, the Lions Inn. I don't wow. know. It's, it used to where the um, Roger Williams Hospital is. Okay. There's yeah. a building back there. They used to. That's where okay. the babies were delivered. Yeah, all yeah. right, all right. They now it's to, all women and infants. Yeah, so. yeah, everybody goes there. I think I might have been the last year that kids were born in that. Really? Uh, I think. There I'm not go. sure. They should let you take a tour of it unless yeah. the building's gone. No, no, it's still there. I think so. I think That's, it's still there. So you've got this one-man play, which yep. kind of describes your life. And with, with a, well, a little bit of, how much of it is reality? How much it is, you know, you've thrown it in to um, dress it up a bit? Uh, I, I would say... I would say ninety-eight percent reality. Okay, because wow. uh, it's it's uh, called the Last Sicilian. And okay. Originally, it was titled. When I started last year, last November, two thousand fifteen. It was memoirs. Of memoirs the of the Last Sicilian. So, yeah. And uh, and as the play progressed, and then uh, some a uh, producer that came on board suggested let's cut it shorter, the the title, mm -hmm. and just call it the Last Sicilian. And that's what we did. And it's basically. Uh, it's a lot of history of okay. how Italy formed, how uh, Sicilians were treated and, south, and southern Italians were treated, because really all the, the power and royalty were up north, and, and um, southern Italy and Sicily were always ruled by other countries. Okay. So I talk about how in 1861 it changed. This guy brought the country together as one. Wow. But still the south was treated badly and taxed to death and all that stuff, and so a lot of Sicilians left. Okay. And they came to America, and then I, I, I talk about how they, the all the different areas of America. Everybody just thinks New York, but a lot of them first went to New Orleans. Really, a lot of them went oh, to I did not know San that. Francisco. Wow. Like, okay. So they went to other parts, and and people, even Italians, come up to me and go, "Wow, I didn't know that yeah. about <laughs> where they went." We all just thought they <laughs> I didn't came, know that. <laughs> we all just thought they came to Ellis Island. Yeah, you know, and then they came to Rhode Island. All right. So. Um, so I talk about that, and then I go into history of my family. Okay. And my, my grandparents, both sides in Sicily, and the stories of their lives a little bit, and then how, uh, you know, ended up my father being born and my mother being born, how they met, and then they started their family. Wow. And then it goes right into America, where I'm, I'm born, and I grew up on the north end of Providence on Charles Street. Okay. Above my dad's bakery. Which is... It's it's Borelli's Bakery now, okay. but it used to be Croach Bakery. Back okay. In the 70s, Jerry Croach owned it. And uh, I think my dad worked for him for about a year. Really? Because he knew he was going to buy it. Yeah. And Jerry sold him the bakery. That's and we excellent. just left the name. Wow. You know, well, Benisi, but we left the name because I think it was around for like 80 years, that bakery. So okay. he kind of left the name. But my dad built it up more because he was just doing bread. Yeah. My dad added in uh, the pastry and the cakes and, you know, the pound cakes and all different kinds of pizza all strips, stuff. all that stuff. And uh, we had it for quite a long time, almost 30 years. In the 90s, we sold it. 
and it became a few different bakeries, but now it's Borelli's. Oh, wow. So that's the history of that bakery. All right. What time uh, did you work in it when you were? A kid? Oh yeah, yeah. We, what, what was the what's the earliest time frame you used to get up? I mean, oh, when I was a kid, though, uh, my parents really encouraged me to you know study and stay in school, and so I, I really didn't much before school. As I got older, though, once I was like you know 13, 14, Saturdays and Sundays I would go down and and pack the bread. Oh, wow. And uh, then I would make the pizza strips. Okay. You know, uh, Reese pans for the bakers at night. Okay. That kind of stuff. Wow. Spinach pies. I talk about in my show about growing up at the bakery, how it was my playground. Okay. And uh, you know, joking around with the people that worked with my father, talking to customers that would come in, and uh, and just it, it just it was like I don't know, it was a different time. You know, the '80s were wild. It, it's just it was before the internet, yeah. and you know and. You, I talk about that. You played outside till it got dark. You never worried about people. It's like the internet opened up this whole new world of uh, of craziness. Oh yeah. You know, and we see everything now twenty four seven. People people have web shows of them driving yeah, through the yeah. east side of Providence. No, that, that's going the down good part. Of it. That's <laughs> the good. That, no, that's the good part. Of it. But then uh, it's the it's the wackos that are out there that. Yeah. And then you see all this bad news all the time, and I I, I don't think. I think the internet and everything seen 24 hour news it just glorifies all that stuff because I truly believe there's so many good people out there sure. that are doing good things but it just gets washed over well that's by and, all this and, bad and really news. and really you you know great way to combat that and uh, you know have a bit of balance is live theater which is what you do so yeah. now you have a theater coming or oh, yeah, it's, it's a theater group that I formed okay, it's right, a group. right before I did the show we, okay it's called a Saint Rihanna Theater okay. Group, and it's my son Santino and my daughter Adriana's name. Oh, okay, great. Saint Rihanna. Fantastic. It sounds classy. It does. It's you know? very nice. It's hey, I got some class. You, you do. You look very sharp today too. Oh, thank you. It's nice a great looking shirt. Thank you. Um, so, I started this theater group, and we, the first thing we did actually was an evening of one act plays. Okay. That we did, and uh, actually had Tony the Dancing Cop. Look, Tony Lepore, yeah, yeah, he was in it. Okay, uh, and uh, he he actually it was a one act play called The Group, and it was a group therapy session. And he played a guy named Ralph, who thought he was a dancing cop. And okay. I'm like, who better to play the part than the actual dancing cop? There you go. And it was hilarious seeing the real dancing cop playing a guy who thought he was a dancing cop. I like that. The concept was just hilarious. It's like twice. Three yeah, times yeah. And I played a guy with anger issues. It was a guy that was scared of everything. A guy that never spoke. Um, uh, my friend Brian Vincent's a comic. He played the he, his actual character, and he does stand up as an old man. Okay. And he played the guy who thought he was old. It was a great time, and it was that with four other plays that we did, and kind of kicked off the Saint Rihanna Theater Group. Okay. And then for years I've been writing this, like three years I've been working on this last Sicilian show, and I said, you know, this is the time to do it. All right. I, I felt like I well, couldn't do you... it. I couldn't do it in my twenties. You I couldn't had to do it in my thirties. You have an interesting story on how you I mean not immediate but one of the one of the something that happened in your life yeah. that, that triggered this mindset that this is what you wanted to do with a with a with a pretty famous guy George Carlin oh yeah George Carlin yeah I mean, I mean, I, I, oh yeah. yeah you say like, oh yeah you know it was not no big deal well, it's, been, well, yeah, it's, it's been, a huge deal I know I know I know I I, I Sometimes I think about it and it's like, wow, it felt like a dream, you know? So tell us. All right. Well, it was back, picture it, Providence, 2004. And uh, it was 2004. Wonderful I think, time to be alive. Yeah. It was around, it was around May mm -hmm. and I'm a limo driver. Okay. And I get this job to pick up George Collin. Okay. His, um, his uh, opening act, his manager at the uh, private airport at Green, at North okay. Star. Yep. So I picked him up. I got a stretch limo. And we drive to the PPAC. The manager wants to see the place, and the opening act gets out. And then George Collins stays in the car and says, We're going to go I have a room to, at the Westin. So I bring him to the Westin, and he goes up just for a few minutes. I guess he freshens up, he changes, and he comes back down. And at the time, that movie Jersey Girl came out. And he played okay. Ben Affleck's dad. Yep. I just saw it the weekend before. Oh, wow. So he gets in, and he's like, Hey, how's it going? How you doing? I said, Good, good. I say, hey, I just saw. Jersey Girl last week and I, I want to tell you I'm not trying to kiss your butt or anything but you did actually you did a really good job that in that big. movie you, sure. it was a great it was a dramatic role right and he's like wow thanks a lot man you know and it was just a real conversation 
So we get to the pee pack, and I park the car in the back, and I'm sitting there. He gets out. He's like, don't open the door for me. He gets out. Then he knocks on the glass. And I put the line. He's like, what are you doing? He said, I got to stay with the car. Yeah. And he's like, nah, forget that. Come in. And so I, wow. all right, I go in with him. And this is hours, hours before a performance. Okay, yeah, yeah. The performance. Sure. And we just sit there, and we just talk about movies, and music, and... Uh, so this was, wasn't just a few-minute conversation. No, hours. I was with him. Jeez. And then uh, he sends me out to go buy uh, dinner at Hemingway's. Okay. For him, his manager. And he buys me a meal. Wow. I come back with the food. We're just sitting in the green room eating. That's amazing. And talking. And at the time, I, I was a theater major. I did a lot of theater. I was starting to get into film. Where, where were you going to school? I went CCRI. Okay, great you know, school. I, Excellent um, school. Great, great theater department. Yeah. Uh, Bert Silverberg has the, of the theater. That he was he was great. Learned so much from him. And so I was doing a lot of these live shows, and and I started doing like little short films and stuff. And I did a lot of extra work in the movies that would come to Rhode Island. But I always. Since I was a kid, I always wanted to do stand-up comedy. Okay. You know, some, I did, as a kid, in my backyard, I would do these one-man shows. I would, like, watch a movie the night before, and I would do the whole movie for the neighbors, the kids, <laughs> and they all watch it. And I, I didn't know it was stand-up back then, but that's right. really what I was doing. Sure. So I said, I said, uh, George, how do I, how do I get started in stand-up? And he's like, Nick, just write five minutes of material and just go to every open mic night you can. Yeah. Even if it's not a comedy one, if it's even music. Mm-hmm. They'll let you do it, probably. Yeah. You know, and I just took that advice, and right from that that week, I just started writing stuff. And this is back, uh, uh, Buddy Cianti was going away on vacation. Okay. And so I was writing stuff about Buddy. Cicilline took over. I was doing all local politics stuff. Um, you know, it's Italian stuff. Growing up Italian. Mm-hmm. So I had this five minutes, and there was a place at the Providence Place Mall called Stitches. And uh, oh yes, I remember that. Yeah. yeah I was there yeah. for a couple of years. Yep. And uh, John Parada, who's like legendary comic, right? he ran this open mic. And I went one week to see what it was like. And I watched. And I approached him. I said, I want to do this. He's all right. Sign up for next week. So another week. So I really was polishing my stuff. And I show up the next week. And there's like, I don't know, 15 people on this open mic. And I was like number eight. Okay. Right in the middle. Yeah, and it was packed. It was packed. And you, you bring people with you. I had like 10 people, and everybody brought 10 people. So it was packed. And the first person goes up, nothing. No laughs. Like, uh, uh-huh. The second, person after person, it was bombing. No laughs. I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be a tough, tough room. Tough room. It's, and, it's and tough I, when the 10 people you bring don't laugh at. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like... This and is what then, I brought you for. And then I got up there, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not bragging. I don't want to brag. Sure, no, 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 boast about weird. myself, you know. <laughs> I got up there, and my those ten people that came were my witnesses. I was the first one to get out loud laughs. Really? Out loud laughs. I mean, what did that feel like? What did that oh, What did that do for you inside? It was like a drug. Really? And, and I, I never did hit drugs, but that's what I imagine it felt like. You, you just wow. Yeah. This feeling that comes like wow. This is like this is working. Wow. This is working. All, all from, I mean, and, and think about it. Would you have done this? Would you have pursued this as aggressively as you have had you not had that conversation and, and talk with George? No, I probably would have waited longer. I okay. probably eventually would have got there, but he really he really gave me that push yeah. to do it. And and the back to that night, George, after he went on stage, and there I am at the wing of PPAC yeah. and, and watching him from wow. the wing, watch this whole act. How many people can say they've watched a show from oh, a, 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 a show of, of that a, caliber, a, yeah, a legend, yeah, 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 you know, from and, the wings. and I'm like looking at it, going, "Man, that's I want to do that." Mm. I, I I meet up that that night. I was like, "I want to do that." And then, right like two minutes before he gets off stage, his, his manager comes over. I forgot his name, but it's a friend of his since high school. Taps me on the shoulder, goes, "Start the car up. He's going to be done in two minutes." That's how well he knew the yeah. act. And I went out there, start the car, and I look, and they all come running in for the go. limo. And he's like, airport. And before one person even got up from the seats of that people, we were like halfway to the airport. Already. Really? Yeah. That's fantastic. That's how fast it was. And then we get to the airport. I, I, I walk him in, and I have this cutting of uh, from the journal of his picture. And I say, hey, Judge, can you sign this? He's like, nah, nah, get rid of that. He goes, I got something better. And he takes out this glossy shot of him, this whole body shot. And he's pointing, he's doing this. And he, and he signs it, thanks, Nick. 
and he signed it for That's me. Excellent. I still have it framed. That's phenomenal. And I was hope, and it's too bad he you know passed away because I know he came around here at least once a year. Yeah. And I would have loved to see him all these years later. Sure. And then you know tell him the story. And like, and I think he would he had a brilliant mind. Yeah. He would remember that. I mean, he a, spent hours with me. I don't think he would have forgot. Well, just when people take the time to, to you know to pour in you know to to. To inspire the next generation, yeah. you know, as it were. I mean, yeah. Brendan Kirby's been on the show. Yeah. He, he handed his jokes to Jay Leno. Yeah. Two hours later, Jay Leno called him. Wow. And yeah. talked to him for about fifteen minutes and just reviewed stuff with him. That means so, so I mean, much, though. Absolutely. It means so much. You give it back to your craft to and everything. Yeah. That's that's huge. That's yeah. Huge. I, and I, I wish more people would do that because you hear a lot of bad stories about guys that just don't want to deal with anybody. Right. But George Carlin. <laughs> And when I first got, I was like, "Wow, George Collin!" I was excited. Then I was like, "Oh man, he's kind of miserable. <laughs> he's compl- he complains about everybody and everything." But he was not like that at no, all. No, that's all the th- act. That's the act. It's yeah. like his therapy. He just gets yeah. it all out. Backstage, just the sweetest guy from New York City. And, like, it was amazing. That's it, was, it was an amazing experience. Now you also do th- you. So you have the comedy side. You, yeah. You've pursued that. Your the last Sicilian is more. Uh, drama and comedy together. Well, it's what was, of, it's what a was, lot of comedy. But, it's a lot of comedy. Yeah, but yeah. What was it like building that play and putting those two concepts together? Because that's tough. Oh yeah, that's not easy. No, it's not. It's not. And it's a, it was cool because I had the idea for so long. Because um, like John Leguizamo, you know him. He, he had like five HBO specials, okay. like one man shows. And I, I watched that starting like in the late nineties. I would watch him. I'm like, oh, that's I, I want to do that someday. But I didn't know what I was gonna do. And then, maybe like three years ago, I just started writing. I drew one scene from that's in the, the, my show right now. I just wrote this one scene about uh, a Thanksgiving Eve that really happened. This guy, he's like high on something. He walks into the bakery at 3 a.m. and comes up to my house. And my dad has to chase him out of the house. And, and my uncle from Sicily, who's like crazy, was staying with us, wanted to kill this guy. So I had this story. It was almost like a screenplay I yeah. ordered it as. And that's what I built it on. And then I started just thinking of all the stories that happened during my childhood. And I would go to my, my parents' apartment and I would sit there and talk with them. And, and they would tell me stories about the old days in Sicily when they were younger. And so I just started combining all that. And they would tell, I wouldn't even write anything, I'd just listen. Yeah. And I'd go, I'd go home right away and I'd write down everything yeah. they told me. Yeah. And. And then it wasn't like long enough. Like I said, I need more. I need more. And then I, I ended up watching this, this documentary on PBS about Italian history. And then they talked a lot about Sicilians. And so I was like, oh wow. So I started researching that more. I said, maybe I should add some history in. Sure. So I just started writing the history portion of it. And I had all these pieces, but it wasn't. I was like, how am I going to put this together? Yeah. And then find. And I had no like ending. So. I talk with my friend uh, uh, Steve Martin, not not the Steve Martin. No, the, it's the, another Steve, uh, another Rhode Island Steve Martin. No. I call him. Uh, and see, and he, I acted with him in a few different projects. And I said, can, "You gotta help me because you need someone you know well and you can trust that knows you yeah. to do that." Because it's just gonna be him and me right. rehearsing. And I, I said, "I need you to kind of be like a director and and get me through this." Yeah. And with him, we pieced it together okay. and put it in the order it is now. And, uh, and then we came up with a, an, the ending that fits the beginning, like a you know a nice. bookcase. That's great. And that's what. It, and you, and I talk about a lot of personal stuff about uh, things that happen uh, with my dad going through cancer, and so it's heavy stuff. Right. But then I, then you gotta throw something in there that's hilarious because the whole it, you don't want to leave everybody on a sour like right. depressed sure sure yeah, yeah. like I'm going they, home they go to, they, <laughs> I'm going to go and bite my pillow <laughs> like a, <laughs> you know and then you, you boom you hit them with a, a great joke and that's how I designed it and, it's, and I described it as a roller coaster ride and just it's up and down and you learn things you um, you feel that like this more like oh what is that feeling you know, Jim yeah, Carrey and sure. the Grinch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm feeling, <laughs> <laughs> and then you got this great comedy, all souped in together in this show, and and it's so special to me because it's my life. Yeah. But then once I started doing it last November, it took it took a life of its own because people are coming to it like, 
they, everybody's getting something out of it. That's great. Like people are like, oh, some people are fascinated with the history. Like I didn't know. That. Some people just love the drama. So and people like that was like the funniest thing. Yeah, I ever did. Yeah. So it's it's rewarding to hear that back, and it's not just Italians. Portuguese people come, Spanish people come, Jewish people, black people, everybody. Wow. Like all races and will come to me after the show and say, "Oh, I relate to that." Yeah, yeah. Because it's all about these families that come to America, and it's about family and people. Everybody can relate to that. Sure. Everybody can relate to your dad, you know, throwing a shoe at you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if everybody can. <laughs> uh, your mom hitting you with the wooden spoon, but yeah. But it's not all that. Uh-huh. It's more. Okay. You know, and so to me, it's it's just rewarding to hear all these people giving their feedback and and what I said it's it's touching their hearts so you've been active in the Rhode Island theater scene and and through different plays and movies you you participated with Brotherhood yeah yeah so what was your role in that well like I said I started in theater and doing the theater this is back in the 90s and I I kind of got out of it and I started going into doing extra work in films and and that one period you know there's so many things coming into yeah. Rhode Island mm. you know and, and then Brotherhood started filming and it's funny when I think I was actually I moved to California when Brotherhood started oh wow and I was out there for a while and I did a live show out there and I was trying to you know make it and go on the auditions every day and and that was like that's crazy. a grind crazy that's oh, a grind because everybody in the world is mm-hmm. there trying to do it and, you know and then I got sick of it. I got sick. I didn't. I didn't really care for California too much, and I came back home, and they're still filming the show. And it's season two now. Brotherhood, they're filming, and I. I got called in from the casting, local casting, to come in to read for this. And it's funny. I was doing limo at okay. the time, and here I am, Henry Bromel. I think his name. He's the Bromel. Yeah. Bromel. Yeah. He wrote it. Right. He, right. 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 Actually, passed away. I found out. Oh really? Oh, yeah. Jesus. Maybe a, a year or two ago. Wow. And. Uh, it's sad to hear that. He well, was such a Blake, sweet guy. Blake Masters yeah. and Henry. He, but Henry was a little older, if I remember. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And sweet guy. Yeah. And I would pick them up from the airports when they flew in, and I would take them different places. And and it was funny. I got called in the audition, and it's him and Michael Carenti okay. directed the episode on me. Right, right. And I walk in, and he's like, hey, I know you. I said, yeah, I drive you around. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, how you doing? And That's great. It was like so funny, and I thought I got called in to play a gangster. I'm like, I'm gonna be a gangster on Brotherhood, and they're like, no, no, we, we want you to be a councilman. I was like, oh, gangster councilman, same thing in Rhode Island, <laughs> you know. I use that line in the show, actually. <laughs> and so it's qualification. Yeah, yeah, same thing. And they had me read. Actually, they had me come in to read for a um, a um, contractor. Okay. And then. Mike Crenzi's like, oh, you want to read something else? I said, yeah. He goes, take this. It's two It's two different councilmen, but read them as one part. Okay. And go out. And he let me go out for like five minutes in the hallway. And he's let me know when you're ready. And I read it through a few times. And I came back, okay, I'm ready. And I did it. And that was it. Thank you. You leave. And about a half hour later, um, they call me up and they say, you got you got the part. It's a councilman. Oh, wow. I said, oh, cool. And we need you to come in tomorrow morning, emailing you the script. You gotta come in tomorrow morning, lines memorized, blah blah. Game I was on. Like, Whoa! Man, I didn't sleep that night. I had to get suits ready. I had to get two different suits. You know, all the instructions they gave me. Sure. And I'm up all night just reading the lines over and over and over. And I went down the next day and filmed the two scenes. That's it, awesome. It was amazing. And then there I was with Jason Clark, okay, who played the councilman brother. Right, right, right. Because then Chris, uh, Jason Isaac. Yep. Played the, the gangster brother, which I drove as well <laughs> from Logan. Him and his whole family, and me and him talked all the way from Logan to his where he was staying in Barrington, I think. Wow, the house they had rented for him, <laughs> and we talked about productions and everything. It's so funny you talk to these people and you didn't realize you're gonna end up being on the show. Yeah, yeah. With them, that's uh, you wonder what's going through their mind. Yeah. It's like, oh, geez, we couldn't get anybody. We have to hire you know, yeah, yeah. Dry, You're not doing anything. And that same summer, I filmed my uh, um, internet show called Bread, Butter, and Bullets. Okay. And it was all filmed at Palmieri's up on the hill. Oh. And it was 10, <laughs> and you can see it on YouTube. I, it's 10 minute episodes. And uh, I wrote, directed, I'm in it. And I, we just play a, a, it's a family owns a bakery and they stage a fake whacking 
to get publicity for the bakery because no one's coming to the bakery. Is that right? And Tony Lepore, the dancing guy, plays my dad in that Jeez. show. That's when I actually first met him. And everybody worked for free. We had no budget. Yeah. My friend came in, uh, Greg Hall, great guy, came in, videotaped it, edited it, all lighting, sound, everything. Yeah. And all these actors came in and did it for free. And it was just a great, it was a great summer. It was a really great time doing that project. So I was really into doing the films and, and, and TV. And, and then, you know, the stand-up. Free from there, that was like 07. 08, the stand up really started taking off. Okay. Because I've been doing it for, you need a few years to really build up an yeah, act. Sure. And by that time, you, I'm, I was considered like a feature act. Okay. And then, you know, and then I say, I had 15 more minutes to this, I could be a headliner. All right. And that's what I strive for. Wow. And, and, and started headlining shows that maybe about so the next, 09. So the next steps that you're going to be taking with, uh, with The Last Sicilian, uh, you're looking, I mean, you've done it here in Rhode Island. Yeah. Uh, you're looking to take this to the next level now to to New York a few yeah a few exits south yeah yeah so, well, uh, because um, like I said I was doing it every month at theater 82 and then I said we gotta you know start reaching out to other theaters and I uh, reached out my friend John helped me who works with the Granite Theater in Westerly got me to do it there in April okay. last April sure and I went out there and a lot of Italians in Westerly I yep. think they all left Providence and they moved to Wesley. They're everywhere. Yeah. They're very nice. But there's a lot. And so the so, the show was sold out. Sold out. It was April 8th. And it was a great show, man. It was a great theater. Beautiful theater if you ever get a chance to go there. Granite Theater down Wesley. Yeah. It's yeah. a beautiful place. And we did the show. And a couple of days later, like, yeah, it was a Friday night, I think. And then Sunday night, the uh, owner of the theater called me up. And he says that uh, there was a guy in the audience, David Black. Okay. Who want, wants you to contact him? He produced like twenty Broadway shows. Wow. He's been in the business for a long time. He's in his he's in his eighties and he's retired, but he liked to talk to me. So okay. So I call him up and he just told me how much he he loved the show. And his, I remember his exact words. He said, "He goes, would you like to get the show to New York?" I said, "Yeah, I would love to get this." Show to I don't know, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I was thinking uh, I was thinking Fall River Sioux and Falls, then South from Dakota. there I'll go to the Cape I don't know no of course I want to go to New York so <laughs> and he goes and then after I said that I said of course he goes he goes I think New York needs this show and I, I didn't get what he was saying at first but then after meeting him and talking to him just the way I described the show how it it touches people's hearts sure and it's such a crazy time now and everything's so fast-paced. This show brings you back Slows it down to a, a simpler time. So you know? I, I saw I saw some clips from the show. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I, I I loved is, and I know this because you know I have a lot of Italian friends. Yeah. I have some Italian, you know. It's, you could pass for Italian. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I try. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Ron and Pete thought I could, yeah, so yeah. you know they're in the back. Yeah, uh, that's right. Hey, how you doing, guys? They're Italian. They, Eatry. They lost a lot of weight. They, yeah. they're stuffed. Yeah. Um, the, uh, <laughs> but there's something about you, you did a, a bit where you, 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 you it, because you're it's a one man play, so you're doing two yeah. roles at one point. Yeah. And you're saying goodbye to somebody, and a, an Italian goodbye is is long <laughs> and drawn out, and it has multiple phases. Oh, you I saw think. the two Italian guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is so. In the play. Describe that to me, you know, because you're. you're you, Italian goodbye you, you, you do it yeah and it's all fun and then all of a sudden it gets reality really yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, hey. yeah, yeah. I, I don't even remember how I came up with that scene because I talk about like right before that I talk about the wave that comes to America mm -hmm. like 4 million yeah. it's like the biggest wave of immigrants America's ever seen at that time yeah and so I we came up with the concept to have a scene where the Italian guy is leaving and his friend staying behind, so it's like ciao, Pasquale, and he's like, even that. Oh, where are you going? You know, and, and I'm doing it all in the Sicilian dialect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The audience can follow. Sure. And I'm going to America. Yeah, I'm to America. He goes, Dulce Pats. You're, you're crazy. You're going to America. He goes, Ah, oh, you're stupid. You know, and, and they're going back and forth, and they start this argument, and like. I'm like, because you're jealous. You're just jealous. I'm going to... He's like, no, I'm not jealous. Okay, I'm jealous. Okay, you got me. I'm jealous. 
and he's like, all right, kisses him goodbye. And then his friend's like, okay, goodbye. You know, give him well wishes. Oh, he's like, give him a, oh, safe travels. And then he finally gets on the boat and he doesn't see him anymore. And then he's like, <clears throat> this <guy's the> odd. <laughs> it's like a real good friend, you know? I think a lot of people can relate to that. Sure. And it's funny. And, well, and you it, bring it to life with the body language. Yeah, I mean, yeah. even if people don't understand, you know, don't don't know Italian or the dialect or yeah. whatever. You, you bring it to life with yeah. the, with and the I, body And, I, you know, I throw a couple of the, the English words in there so they know. Yeah. Uh, it's enough in to with, thread them along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, and they, they get it. It's quite a it's it's quite a it's quite a production. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's fun and it's fun. You get to play and I play my dad. My dad's like the main character of this. So where can people find more information about you and and the the theater company? And um, well, you have a Facebook page. Yeah, I have Facebook. Everybody says, "Why aren't you, you going to get a website for the theater group?" Eventually, I will. Okay. Uh, probably even do a site for the show. Yeah. But everybody's on Facebook, and everything's on Facebook. The world so lives it, on Facebook. Yeah. If you if you search "Last Sicilian One Man Play." We'll tag it in the description. Yeah, it'll bring you to absolutely. I'm on there. Yeah. I, I got my uh, actor comedian page, my regular page, and then the San Rihanna Theater Group. Okay. We have a, you know. So everything's up there everything, on Facebook. You can find look, it there. Yeah, look up uh, San Rihanna. Awesome. And yeah, it just, it's just funny, doing it, and hopefully, now working, I worked with David and a couple other people, and we're trying to get this show to New York City. And it's excellent. We 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 had a little success a couple places, but then it didn't work out. You know, well, it takes time. time yeah, it takes everything. time. It takes yeah. time, and I'm not rushing it. I don't. I want to make sure it, it's going to get right. there at the right time, the right place. Okay. And so, I hope we're shooting for 2017. Okay. And then, in the meanwhile, uh, November 5th, I will be doing the one-year anniversary show in a new space. Oh wow! All it's right. in Pawtucket. What's What's the space? It's uh, it's at Dean's List Academy. Okay, great. And I believe that that 401. Film festival is going to be all right with there. Adam Thoreau. Yeah, yeah, great guy. It's that same space. Awesome. And, uh, the owner is a great guy, Owen. We became good friends with him over the past couple of years, and he's given me a space in the back to to build the theater and do my show and other productions. So, so it's going to be like a real a place to come real and maybe see four, five productions a year. That's excellent. Of original work and mostly stuff that I'm writing, and then um, so while I'm doing that. At the same time, I'll be working on, you know, connections in New York and trying to get the show Still build to the bridges. Try to get the show to New York. There you go. Well, then, it's it's uh, it, it's it's funny. Yeah, it's funny. I, the clips I've seen, and you know, definitely want to get to the one year anniversary. Show. Oh yeah, it'd be great. Be and fun. then I'm doing and October fifteenth. I don't know when this episode's come out, but October fifteenth, up at the Union Station in okay. Worcester. All right. The big Italian group up there, okay. the older sons of Italy. All right. Again, together with other Italian groups. And they are doing this one evening, and they hired me to come and do the show. All right. And it's with an Italian dinner. It's like it's like forty five bucks a ticket, and it's gonna be huge. They yeah. they said they're expecting two three hundred people. Wow. I'm like, wow, that that would be awesome. So, so the one year of show is pending the uh, the success. They don't take you out after this. One. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh... No, that's I'm definitely gonna do the one year. I have to. I, I, well, I'm saying if you make it oh, yeah. out of that show, I mean, oh, yeah. it's, you know, the stakes are kind of high, you know, 200 to 300 Italian. Yeah, it better be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, might want to. Uh... I'll have to sneak out the back door. There you go. Have that limo ready. Yeah, yeah. Like George Collins. <laughs> That's it, baby. I'm jumping in. Go, go, go. More lessons learned. Back to Providence. That's it. Well, thank you so much for joining me in the car today. Thank Wish you all the best. Thank we'll you link so everything. Much. Yeah. And uh, for more information, be sure to follow the links below. Like and subscribe. Have an awesome day. Thank you. Bye-bye.